Former President Olusha Gwambasanjo has declared that Western liberal democracy has failed in Africa because it was forced, quote unquote, forced on the continent. The former president noted that the Western liberal democracy will never work as a system of government in Africa because it does not take into account the view of the majority of the people. Let's take a listen. We have a system of government in which we have no hands to define and design, and we continue with it, even when we know that it is not working for us. Those who brought it to us are now questioning the rightness of their invention, its deliverability, and its relevance today without Joining us live is constitutional lawyer Evans Ofeli. Barrister Ofeli, good to have good day, you sir. on Plus Politics. Thank you. What can we say about the remark of this elder statesman on liberal democracy? and his seeming futility or his seeming uh, anachronism of a sort in our, in our polity? Well, I think that the, the statement he just made um, is one that uh, calls for a lot of interrogation. First of all, he, he meant that the Western liberal democracy is one that have, uh, we have practiced for a while, but it appears that we are not able to practice it exactly as the West practice it. And I think it's right to that extent. It's right to the extent that uh, we have practiced it in a, a manner that leaves a lot to be desired. Okay, from the way we conduct our political system to electioneering, to um, getting to the tribunal and then getting the result. And we have defined our own kind of liberal democracy, which in itself is not liberal, by the way. Um, he, I agree with him, except that uh, the messenger himself also contributed uh, um, massively to the distorted democratic result that we have had over the years. He has led this country both as a military head of state and as a, uh, a civilian president, and he should know. And um, it was under his watch that democracy could not succeed as it were. He even created a layer of uh, a third-term attempt, which um, was never democratic, which was, which was unconstitutional, and all that. I think that why he makes that remark, he should also let the public know and the entire international community know that uh, he contributed immensely to the distorted value and the outright inconsistent democratic results that we have today in, in, in the country. Uh, he has mentored people too during his uh, reign as a uh, the PDP leader, of course, being the president of the country, the leader of the party, he, he, he introduced what he called the do or die affair kind of politics. He also superintended over uh, human rights abuse and violations uh, that was akin to genocide. Okay, and he also contributed immensely to the uh, uh, distortion of the economic value of the Nigerian state, given that for eight years uh, he didn't perform as much as he should have done, given that uh, we're just coming out from military regime. Uh, the democracy was fresh. The economy was not this bad. But um, that dividend of democracy that was desired by the citizens, we didn't get it. We're not up to this number of population. Um, we had a good opportunity 
So fix electricity, for example, we couldn't do that. We have good opportunity to fix the economy, make it robust, um, lay the foundation for for which the um, um, uh, coming leaders or successive leaders would have built on. But all that were not uh, delivered. So I think it's a message that is made in good faith, but same message shot the messenger at the foot. So you find it a bit, uh, a bit difficult to separate the messenger from the message. However, however, the color of the truism that the message wears to you, is that what you're saying? Of course. The message is, the, is, is quite clear and is the truth. Uh, it's the truth to the extent that it is given we have not been able to practice democracy the way it is practiced. So look, at, look at the issues of uh, freedom of speech, for example. Uh, in the last four or five years, we've had a repression of the citizen, even, even to assemble freely and protest peacefully. Uh, you have been hunted down, okay, today. So that's not how it is practiced in the West, from where it came from. Uh, the issue of the welfare, the, the security and welfare of the citizens, okay, is guaranteed in where democracy came from. It's not guaranteed in Nigeria, okay. Certain aspects of the constitution in favor of Nigeria is not justiciable. It is justiciable where democracy came from, okay. If you look at our what, political what, development... What are, what are the justiciable uh, principles that you would like to see replicated here? You want, let's talk to the specifics now because I, I, I tend to be hearing a someone utopian portraiture of democracy in the West. And I don't know anywhere now in the world where liberal democracy has not been faced with disillusionment. Indeed, in some respects, voter apathy. So let's speak to what are the classical differences of our democracy to what prevails, say, in any Western liberal democracy that it was just opposing Nigeria's democ liberal democracy with? Okay, I'll, I'll give you many as much as possible. Let's look at the issues of uh, uh, Chapter 2 of our Constitution, for example, where uh, public health care is one of the fundamental objective and directive principles of state policy. Public health care, for example, is not visibly um, organized here. In the West, it is. In the West, it is. So that one is very clear. Public health care is guaranteed in the West, not guaranteed here. That's one. Two, um, human rights in terms of the welfare and security of the citizen is guaranteed in the West to a large extent, uh, to the extent that the public are, are largely uh, uh, secured, uh, except for some cases, maybe in the US, where you have gone back to another, which is actually exceptional. Not, it's not an attack on the populace, OK, in that situation. It is usually an attack between people with differences and the rest of that. So to a large extent, security and welfare report. Access to credit is guaranteed over. You don't need to have 100% of funds before you access goods and services over there in the West. Okay, meritocracy. Over there in the West, it, 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 the, the policies of government, acceptability, employment is based on meritocracy. Okay, not on nepotistic tendencies and tendencies that are, are repugnant as to where. Okay, so it's guaranteed. Uh, when you look at uh, also uh, the issues of uh, uh, human rights, human rights generally, from the right to life, to right to freedom of movement, to expression, to, you know, um, the rest of it, largely so. I know that in the West, there are certain areas that they are challenged, but it is not to the volume or quantum we have it here in Nigeria, where um, you know, the, the rights of citizens are willfully suppressed by the establishment. 
and the government will get away with how it. Would you respond, so, how would you respond to the argument that says that uh, some of the things you have itemized are working in the West are not working in, say, our polity or in most, in most uh, quote unquote, purported liberal democracies of Africa, that some of these things are functions of poverty rather than the organic dystopia of democracy that you fundamentally need to solve the problem of poverty. And if you really look at the history of the West, before they got to where they are now, they passed through what the kind of thing we are experiencing now because of the relative poverty that prevailed in their societies then. How would you, how would you uh, respond to that? Well, from, from the get go, from the get go, the if you look at the constitution, the people's poverty to be blamed on their government. Because if you look at the constitution in section 14.3, it says that the, federal, the government shall stir the economy, shall stir the economy in such a way that it will guarantee prosperity, prosperity of the people. Session 14. That the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. So by the time you you just oppose uh, this with, with, with the West, you see, Is Baristan Fel is still there? The people have knowledge and perhaps the knowledge to take on government officials on the uh, Baristan Fel, the connection is a bit rough. Would have got, the citizens would have gotten to a point where. Hello, Baristan Fel. Can you switch off the video and let's yeah. just do audio? Otherwise, right, they should be able to enforce their rights, their rights under the law, uh, by making concerted effort to ensure that government guarantees the basics of 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 the, the human the human condition under the Nigerian state. So the the people are so repressed. You talk about. The fact that the West went through a lot of uh, difficulties before they got to where they, were, they, they are. We have also suffered enough. We have gone through a lot of difficulties. 60, 60 years plus is enough time to have fixed an economy and place it in a way, in, a, in, a, in an area where it will guarantee the right of the citizens and to give the citizens the dividend of democracy and what is required by law. But here, rather than stir the economy to favor the citizen, it is said to favor just the bourgeois. The very few, less than 1% of the people in our country are the ones that enjoy the dividends of democracy under our, our legal system as uh, currently constituted. Mr. Feli, and this will be my last question for you. You don't think that it, it is somewhat functionally delusional for a country that the only thing it has done consistently, positively, or indeed, in, in fact, it, it, it's, it's anathema to use the word positive in that instance. The only thing Nigeria has increased on is the population since independence. When we got independence in 1960, we were 58 million people. Now we are more than 200 million. And with our 200 million plus population, three times the population of South Africa, 
we are just about the same GDP level with South Africa. So it means that three Nigerians produce what one South African worker produces. With such an economy where resources are daily tasks, we add 5 million, the population of Norway or the population of Gabon, we add 5 million to our population every year. And somebody who twice ruled Nigeria within those six decades now has the temerity to be finger pointing and be pontificating when ordinarily he had two major chances to make sure that population could have been positively controlled or productivity could have been positively increased. I I'm thinking maybe somebody like you need to review this thing more critically than just buying the sexy part of, uh, of the submission. Yes, I, I understand that um, that um, the population has increased astronomically, uh, but that, that doesn't mean that um, government has also performed either. Yes, over the years, um, government have not shown Ah, but Mr. Ofeli, uh, government have not shown uh, uh, any positive. Uh, uh, unfortunately, yeah. we have to go on this occasion. The line has not been too good. We really want to appreciate you for uh, your invaluable contribution, the robustness of your intellectual, of your intellectual contributions, uh, uh, and uh, thank you for enriching the program. No, no. We really have to go at, no, this, okay. at this juncture. Thank you.